This is KGW News at Sunrise. A major developing story overnight. President Trump and the First Lady both test positive for COVID-19. One of the president's top aides was the first to come down with the virus yesterday. Now dozens, if not more, could have been exposed. We are tracking the latest updates and reaction from around the world. While most Oregon public schools stay fully remote, some private schools have kids back in the classroom. We'll look at what the schools are doing to keep everyone safe and teachers, parents and students let us know how it's going so far. And since this is a Friday morning here on Sunrise, we're going to scratch out a few minutes for some fun. In honor of this weekend's virtual Mount Angel Oktoberfest, we have a brand new Sunrise Rewind that shows off some of our favorite moments covering this event <laughs> in the past. And there is our friend Rodney Hill rolling the kegs. Ooh, look at him go. He's good <laughs> at that. <laughs> Good morning to you on this Friday. Thank you for waking up with us. What a Friday morning yeah. it is. Oh, tons to get to this morning, but we're going to start off with Rod and a quick look at your forecast. Hi, everybody. Well, Dense Fog uh, Episode 2. Take a look at the map this morning. I think today is going to play out a lot like yesterday. This fog is going to become more dense and even more widespread uh, as we move through the morning hours. You can see much of the area all the way to uh, parts of the coast seeing some foggy conditions this morning. We're at 58 degrees. Assuming, and let me say that again, assuming we get developing sunshine, we'll warm up to about 75 degrees. We'll have the weekend forecast for you coming up shortly. All right, thank you, Rod. As we mentioned at the top of the show, President Trump and the First Lady have tested positive for COVID. This news broke late last night when the president tweeted that he and Melania are quarantining. All of this comes just hours after one of the president's closest advisors tested positive. And that's Hope Hicks. She's been traveling with the president for Tuesday's debate and also flew with him Wednesday to his Minnesota rally. Several White House officials, campaign staffers and Trump family members have been in contact with Hicks in recent days. She was seen traveling on Air Force One without a mask. This is a high risk exposure in an enclosed environment. Everybody on that flight, 14 days quarantine, regardless of what your test shows. While the president was waiting on his results last night, he called into Fox News and spoke about Hicks. Take a listen. But I, you know, I spent a lot of time with Hope, and so does the First Lady. And she's tremendous. I was a little surprised, but she's, she's a very warm person. She has a hard time when soldiers and law enforcement come up, comes up to her, you know, she wants to treat them great, not say, stay away, I can't get near you. It's a, it's a very, very tough disease. And we have just learned Vice President Mike Pence has tested negative for the virus. That just coming down now from the White House. And he did send this tweet, sending his love and prayers to the President and First Lady. We do not know <clears throat> about the second lady yet, Vice President Pence's wife. So a lot of people wondering what happens next, how this will impact the election. We just have a month to go. NBC White House correspondent Jeff Bennett joins us live from outside the White House this morning. So Jeff, what are you hearing? Hey, good morning, Nina. And the fact that the Pence's have both now tested negative is important from a continuity of government perspective because that has been one of the questions that we've been asking. As the president has been here, uh, remains here self-isolating, self-quarantining, so says the White House physician, um, what happens to the leadership of this country? So that's an important answer uh, that we now have. And of course, the Pence's are tested every day. And there's a question now as to whether or not the two of them have to self-quarantine. So the White House, as we understand it, has undertaken this extensive contact tracing process because, as you rightly point out, Hope Hicks, the president's top aide who's been traveling with him extensively over the, the past week, she was on Air Force One along with dozens of Trump family members, top White House officials, all of them on their way to that debate stage uh, in, in Ohio. And it's also an issue facing Joe Biden, as we understand it. There's some reporting that Joe Biden himself will also uh, be tested for the coronavirus this morning. And we also expect to hear from him directly. So this is a, a development, a jarring headline that has thrown the nation's leadership into crisis. It has upended the 2020 presidential race. And now here it is, President Trump contracting a disease that he, for the last few months, has sought to downplay. You know, mocking Joe Biden on the debate stage for wearing a mask just last night and taped remarks the president delivered at a fundraiser. He said, 
the pandemic, the end is in sight, even though that stands in, in stark contrast uh, to the advice of his top health officials. And so right now, uh, today, we're waiting to learn more from either President Trump or his officials about his current status and whether or not he's experiencing any symptoms. Back to you. All right, Jeff Bennett live for us in D.C. Thank you for that update. Stay tuned. Well, President Trump isn't the only world leader to contract COVID. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson tested positive in March. His case was so severe that he ended up in intensive care. He revealed back in May that doctors were actually prepared to announce his death as he battled the virus. He said when he tested positive, he was in denial and kept on working. In the meantime, the president of Brazil, Jair Bolsonaro, tested positive in July. And he had also downplayed the severity of the virus for months. Now, we know you have questions about how President Trump will handle his duties while quarantining and what will happen with the next two debates. We will look into that coming up in our next half hour. And as we continue to get any new information, we will update you on air and online at KGW.com. Let's get to some of our local stories here this morning, including this one about a group of parents who absolutely no questions asked want their kids to go back to in person classroom learning. They held this rally yesterday in Clackamas County, and that group is certainly not alone. There's also this mom in the Salem Kaiser School District who started her own petition to add in person learning to schools there. And that petition has more than 3000 signatures so far. The mom behind the petition says she's specifically worried about kids who may be falling behind with online learning because they simply don't have enough support right now at home. You know, we're not forcing everybody to go back to school. That is absolutely not what we, you know, would want to do or feel comfortable. We know that there are people at risk and there are certain teachers that, you know, are not ready. We can also tell you in Washington County, the Beaverton School District decided this week to extend online learning for its fourth through 12th grade students until February 8th. Portland Public Schools still has its distance learning model in place right now until November 5th. And then back to Salem Kaiser, officials in that district haven't changed their plan. Instead, they say they'll continue to monitor the metrics and make any needed changes in the coming weeks. There are private schools in the area that have some of their students learning in person right now. Many of those schools chose to go with a hybrid model to start the year with a mix of in-person and distance learning. At Columbia Christian School in Northeast Portland, kindergarten through eighth grade has been back at school for two hours a day, two days a week for the past week. The rest of the time, students do remote learning. Sixth grade teacher Doug Moore has eight kids in his class at a time. They're all physically distant, he says, and they're all wearing masks. A lot of the students being in the room physically with, even though they're removed distance, you know, wise, it really has breathed some life into them and given them some hope that this will eventually be over. We just have to be smart while it's still here. Columbia Christian High Schoolers started also a hybrid model earlier this week. So keep in mind, private schools aren't completely free to make up their own rules. They do still have to follow certain parts of the state's school guidance, and that includes health screenings, face coverings, and cleaning protocols. Developing this morning, two shootings in the same day in Portland's Park Rose neighborhood. Both happened near Northeast 111th and Sandy. The latest one happened just before 8 o'clock last night. Police say two people were hurt, but we don't know how badly. The other shooting happened yesterday morning and one person died. The number of shootings in Portland continues to rise. We've had many more than last year. Counting last night, there have been 596 shootings. On Wednesday night, at least 58 shots were fired near Dawson Park in North Portland. That's a block from Legacy Emanuel Medical Center. Later, one person walked into an area hospital asking for help. And there was a barrage of what sounded like maybe 20, 25 shots. And then it was silent for a while. And then it was another barrage that you could tell was in a different, like that was moving. Overall, shootings in Portland are up 82% compared to this time last year. Well, this could be huge news if you have a student ready for college. Washington State University Vancouver will offer in-state tuition to some out-of-state students. So it's available for anyone in Multnomah, Clackamas and Washington counties for the spring and fall terms of 2021. So according to their website, in-state tuition, books and technology fees for one year amount to $12,000. 
compared to their out-of-state amount, which is $27,000. At this moment in time, with COVID, with the fires, with more students interested in staying closer to home, that uh, now really was the, the time that made sense for us to move this initiative forward. So this program will save eligible students almost $15,000 a year. Anyone seeking their undergraduate degree is eligible. All right, at 10 minutes after 5 o'clock, we're going to check in for the first time with a long look at our weekend forecast. It is Rod Hill. Uh, Rod, one of the things I noticed last night, the moon. The moon was uh, out and it was shining hazily, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> the harvest moon! Yeah. yeah, still getting that California wildfire smoke. Uh, a quick mention that the monitor behind me looks like it's not turned on, and that is correct. It's not working. So we'll deal with that kind of boring background this morning. Let's get you to the weather maps. A couple things to, to get to, including the California wildfire smoke. Air quality warning still in place through 4 this afternoon for Jefferson and Wasco counties. Now, the good news is, so far your air quality hasn't been that bad. The smoke from those nearby fires has been kind of laying down. In fact, air quality in Madras this morning is actually reported as good. Now, this is a new player. Air stagnation advisory posted all the way through. Through Monday. This is uh, because of a temperature inversion that's developed. That means if you're on a step ladder and you climb it, you actually start to find warmer temps up top and not and the colder temps stay down low. Also, calm winds will keep that. So that's a stagnant setting. You're asked to limit driving, small engine operation, basically limit putting pollutants into the air that could deteriorate the air quality. Good news, though, the California wildfire smoke is expected to thin out tonight and not really be much of a player. So, so far, the air quality, again, this is hooked to DEQ, and it shows you just a few of the reporting sites. But generally, I just checked statewide, we are in the moderate to good range until you get down around Medford and then into California where the air quality is really bad. So fingers crossed, maybe we'll get through the weekend with air quality remaining moderate. 58 degrees is the temperature out in Portland at PDX. Here are the other numbers in the North Valley up into Clark County, 52 in Battleground. Again, we have widespread fog. It's going to get increasingly dense, I think, in spots as we go through the morning hours. Same deal tomorrow. Sunday, not so much a foggy start, just a classic marine layer in the morning and then some afternoon sun. And we still have rain on Thursday. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you, Rod. Well, it's official. Oregon health authorities say trick-or-treating should be off the table. Yes, they did say that, Brendan. In fact, we're going to spell out exactly what the latest guidance from the Oregon health authority says and how some people around here are reacting to this trick-or-treating news. Then later this hour, we're going to tell you about this tree in Hillsboro that's offering a little hope. The idea behind the wishing tree is to bring people together.